What's up, hooligans? So, Mean Girls is coming out this weekend, and I thought, what better way to prepare than to watch Mean Girls 2? Which, by the way, I didn't even realize was a movie until I accidentally typed in Mean Girls 2, thinking it's the title of the upcoming movie. But no, that's just, that's just called Mean Girls, with a musical note in it. So imagine my surprise. Oh, when does Mean Girls 2 come out? What? 2011? Huh? Anyways, Mean Girls 2 has a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, so I'm sure this is gonna be a brilliant film. My expectations are very low going into this movie. Let's just try to have fun as much as possible. I love that they intentionally animated that to be like, just making sure you know this is Mean Girls 2, right? Because we showed two cars. Now this is gonna be different from Mean Girls because it's twice the girls and it's gonna be twice the fun. That sounded way more creepy out loud. There are times in your life when you find yourself in very awkward situations. Yeah, speaking of awkward situations, I was at the doctor's the other week and the receptionist asked for my last name and I said, it's L-I-U and her response was good, how are you? It's not like I'm selling my kidney or anything. Although that would have been less painful. Oh, the cringe dialogue is already starting. I'm gonna try not to pause every time something cringy is said though. So, at the top of the movie, we are introduced to Jo, who is starting her senior year at a new high school. We learn that she dreams of going to Carnegie Mellon University for college, but to survive high school, she vows to stay out of drama. Dad built engines for race cars. And so did I. Wait, that's kind of sick. I was more naive back then. <laughs> I was naive back then, but now I'm cool. My rules of survival were simple. Okay, so is she supposed to be like the loser version in this Mean Girls? Because honestly, so far she seems pretty cool. Smart cars who don't fit in. Hey, I didn't approve being in this movie. It's sports car. Oh man, I haven't heard this song in forever. Every time I hear Katy Perry, I just want to dance. This was like the peak of clubbing music. Ah, oh, here we go. Here are the Mean Girls. All the plastic. Man, I am so glad that we as a society have decided to move away from these 2010 fashion trends. Like, what is that shirt that she's wearing, the girl on the left? And why are there so many ruffles? Did people really dress like this in 2011, especially in high school? This is, this is wild to me. The number- Wait, I missed her name. What's her name? And Mandy Weatherly. Mandy Weatherly? We went from Regina George badass bitch to Mandy Weatherly. That's honestly the most disrespectful part of this whole movie. Okay, so the new mean girls are Mandy, Chastity, and Hope. This is wild. Now we meet Abby, who is extremely unpopular. A loser, if you will. You look great. Really? The fact that she just straight up believed her, like, girl, what do you think? Like, you just got slushied and you're just here being like, really? I, I look great? And I'd, I'd love to show you around. Ugh, I don't like her. She reminds me of some people from high school and it's, it's PTSD. I can find my way to the front office, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't need your help, actually. You can go clean up. Let me set your mind at ease. We oh my gosh, wait. Is it the same Principal Duval? Because this actor is also in the first Mean Girls and his name is also Principal Duval, right? So is this the same school? Or is he just like a repeating character in each movie? Because I'm pretty sure he's in the new upcoming Mean Girls as well. Good Lord. And uh, we're also aware of your many moves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead the way she said, okay. Jo heads off to her first class where, conveniently enough, there is an empty seat next to the handsome jock, Tyler. Which, by the way, is just the most default jock name there is. Homex down the hall, miss. Actually, as refreshingly sexist as that is... 
I like her actually. I think I like her better than Caddy because it feels like she knows who she is and she's not afraid to speak her mind. You can be Tyler's partner. Okay, everyone. Ooh, Tyler. <laughs> he opens his mouth and sounds like an ass. Wow. <laughs> I like her. I, I, I actually really do like her. She's not like the other girls. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Could not deliver that line less impressed. At the cafeteria, which for some reason is just called the food area, we learn a bit more about the plastics. Chastity is I fucking Tyler, who according to Hope, is off limits because Mandy said so. Mandy is also in a relationship with this other jock named Nick. This is also the first instance where Mandy takes an interest in Joe. Do not be done with me. I don't have to play dumb. <laughs> Just nothing going on up there. Yeah, one week in LA and I'll be a bikini model, hyphen reality star, hyphen awesome. Hyphen reality star, hyphen awesome. Can we bring this language back? Can we start saying that? Hey, babe. Hey, have you been lifting weights? <laughs> oh, I do. Oh, oh. Ah. No groping south of the equator. <laughs> Oh my god, I love her, actually. Who the hell is she? Her name is Joe. Joe, more like Joe Mama. Yeah, I instantly regretted that. I'm above that kind of humor. She's kind of pretty, don't you think? If you're into pleather. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so if the dog eats anything it throws up? Is that supposed to be like a ED joke? <laughs> I will probably laugh at every single joke that girl says. Bro, how are you gonna leave your dog behind? That's just messed up. Back at her home, Joe talks to her dad about college applications. I'm sorry I let you down. I know you're disappointed, Joe, and that's okay. Honey, you don't always have to be so strong. Huh? Wait. I have to rewind. Let's rewind that. Okay, so the dad just told her that she can't go to her dream college because they can't afford it. And then he goes, I'm sorry I let you down. I know you're disappointed, but you don't have to be that strong. Th I just don't understand how he connected point A to point B. That's like if I said, I'm sorry I killed your dog. I know you're sad, but you don't always have to be so strong. You see how that line of dialogue just doesn't make any sense? Strong? Right, she's confused. She's like, why did you say strong? My mom died before I was one. Oh. Damn, that got depressing real fast. We then get some exposition dumping regarding Mandy and Abby's history. They are next door neighbors since childhood and Mandy has always been jealous of Abby for being more wealthy and she just can't stand the idea of being lesser to anyone. While Mandy seemingly had everything, Abby had more. Wait, so you're telling me that Abby is a rich girl? Like even richer than Mandy. Then why is she first of all dressed like that? Second of all, acts like that. Like she has full capabilities of putting herself together, being confident, being popular. Mandy's was cool, but Abby's was three stories high. Like look at that. Normal people can't afford a freaking giant ass inflatable slide for your birthday. There is no reason Abby should be acting like a loser as she is. Hi. Well, that had more to do with- <laughs> Y'all saw her face? Abby got a handicapped parking spot due to her injured ankle, which means Mandy no longer has the best parking spot at school. This sets her off even more and lead the plastics to bribe Elliot, our resident nerd, to embarrass Abby on the World Wide Web. I really do wish they would have made Mandy blonde. I think brunettes just look inherently nicer. Maybe that's just from my experience. I think her character would have looked a lot more mean if she was also blonde. Of course. Does his shirt really say geek? You know, I can't even make fun of him because in middle school, I once told someone, I am not a nerd, I am a geek. Get it right. 
Abby then gets brutally bullied at school, which resulted in her car getting vandalized. This leads to Joe to take pity on her by giving her a ride back home. Her parents are really concerned with Abby's loneliness, so they offer to secretly pay Joe to be her friend. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, that was funny. I would have laughed in the cafeteria too. <laughs> Okay, see, now that is mean. Like, I'm not gonna laugh at that, that's pretty mean. <laughs> oh look, she dropped the homework. I wonder if Joe's gonna pick it up so she can go look on the inside of her house. She keeps saying that everybody hates her. We gonna spa. Mommy's not gonna fix this, Sydney. I mean, it could. I'll always take some money. Whoa, now we've come full circle back to the beginning and we're only 15 minutes in. For you to be her friend. Two, three, four thousand to get you started. You're crazy. Sign me up. I apply. I, I volunteer as tribute. I will absolutely be her friend, sir. Yes, sir. You can't buy friends. You could buy me? College? Bro, no way he is offering to pay for college. She would be so dumb for not accepting this offer right now. I figured, who would it hurt? That's right, that's right, take the money. While the plastics are surfing the internet, they find the video of Joe helping Abby. Along with it, many positive comments about Joe. This, of course, does not sit well with Mandy. I, I'm Mandy with an I, and you're Joe, right? I see what's gonna happen, so the mean girls are gonna try to indoctrinate Joe into becoming a mean girl so that she can stop being friends with Abby. Flawless plan, if I say so myself. We only use skinny and sweet. It's like cellulite in a strap without the cellulite. I love that every 2010s movie with teenage girls in it was all just skinny jokes. Registration for AP test. Oh my god, I'm triggered. I literally forgot the words AP test. Side note, there is this homecoming dance coming up, which is also when the school sets up a fundraising for charity. This part will come up later. Mandy, you are so winning homecoming queen. Totally winning. I bet she's not gonna win, cause that's how irony works, huh? <laughs> later, when Mandy sees Joe hanging out with Abby, she decides to wage war against Joe. Can you tell that she's angry? Do you want to come inside? I'll probably break something. She's like, um, yeah, I don't hang out with poor people. <laughs> Look at her looking around. She's like, your house is really small. Oh my gosh, is that a friend? Why did he say it like that? A friend? You're running a chop shop over there. Shut up, old man. The plastics somehow find Joe's house and trespasses and initiates their series of pranks. The first one being putting heavy duty glue on Joe's Vespa. The prank backfires as it makes Joe more popular amongst the students as a result of standing up to Mandy. How are you? Oh! <laughs> I just I want to hear that scream again. Oh! 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 Who would ever think of something so childish yet brilliant? Except a bunch of mean girls. <gasps> Whoa, is that why this movie is called Mean Girls? What I like about this movie so far is that it's different from the first Mean Girls, like it's not trying to be copy-paste in terms of plot, and I do appreciate that. Oh, also Abby is an artist, I guess, and wants to go to art school. These are... <laughs> they're incredible. Aw, oh, look at them bonding, so cute, I'm sure there's gonna be no drama that arises whatsoever. As things are looking up for Joe, she begins to heat things up with Tyler. Ooh. I figured I could enjoy a few other things. Wait a minute, I thought she was not into him anymore. It's the butt chin, isn't it? It always works. I think I'm seeing what she's seeing. It, yeah, definitely the butt chin is what I'm looking at for sure. Yup, the butt chin. Uh huh. Maybe we should get in some extra study time. Go to a movie or something? Yeah, study time at the movies. Uh-huh. It's my shop partner, and I've seen him without a shirt. Good enough for me. That's, you know what? That's valid, girl. God, Nick, keep up. Yeah, Nick, keep up. 
Tyler picks her up in Nick's car for their first date, but things may not be what they seem. Nice wheels. Okay, I've always wondered this question, but what did kids do to go on dates before they were able to drive? Like, did your parents just pick you up and, and drop you off to where your date is supposed to be? So, but then you can't go anywhere. How does that logistically work? Serious answers only in the comments. I love that they were just like, yeah, we're not going to really spend any time showing their date together. We're just going to show you a PowerPoint presentation and you'll get the idea. Never kissed anyone. I love that she's like, I've never kissed anyone. And then begins flawlessly tonguing each other. Uh oh, someone's being a little perv and recording them. Joe's very private conversation with Tyler is leaked to the whole school, and she is devastated and rightfully furious at Tyler. Me, I'm your principal. You know me. See in the hallway. <laughs> that tickled me for no reason. How many? Six boyfriends. Ever had a boyfriend? Oh, he was in on it. He did that whole thing on purpose. Damn, dude. Go eat a bag of d you ass. I hope this movie just straight up turns into Kill Bill for the rest of the movie and then she goes on a rampage. Joe learns some new information about Tyler and Tyler gets into a fight with Nick, who is revealed to be behind the hidden camera. Tyler's Mandy's stepbrother. Oh, it all makes sense now. Oh, gross. <laughs> what was that acting? Oh, gross, man. Oh. Come on, man. I thought it was Don't you turn your back on me? Maybe they should make a spin-off movie called The Mean Boys. Cause that sounds fun. Damn it. Your best you shot. Scare me. Honestly, as evil as Mandy has been this whole time, I can't even lie, she is so c Does this mean I'm forgiven? Well it's No, she's forgiven him? I wanted to see fighting! After getting dethroned in the very real hot couples competition, Mandy doubles down on her pranks to try to sabotage Joe in her academics so that she won't be able to get a scholarship for CMU. Who switched the eggs? I love that the teacher's just like, eh, that's above my pay grade. The plastics return to Joe's house and purposely damages Joe's dad's race car engines. Ew, 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 there's poo on my Jimmy Choo. I guess you could call them Jimmy Poo's. Oh, yeah, I need to be stopped. Uh, I can't go any further. What is the matter with you? <laughs> she is so funny. Oh, man, the dad's not going to be happy about that. Joe declares war against the plastics. Mandy had gone too far. Oh, she's going to go kill Bill. She's going to go kill Bill. I'm here for the long run. Oh, yeah? Are you sure about that? She's like, oh yeah, are you sure about that, Mandy? More like, Mandy's nuts. I need to stop making those jokes. They're not funny. While Joe and Abby plan their attack, she almost reveals the truth about their friendship to Abby. You don't need to do this with me. Of course I do. It's what best friends are for. She's like, I never called you my best friend. There's something I need to tell you. No, don't tell her. You gotta wait until you get that college tuition first, and then you can tell her after you've all moved on. Joe and Abby finally decide to get back at the plastics by throwing a huge party at Abby's house on the same night as Mandy's birthday. You know, most people would die to be my brother. More like conceited. Whoa, I feel some sexual Alabama tension going on over here. We are ready. No, no, Abby, no. Her mom is like, are you serious? Looking like a poor? Did y'all have high school parties? Cause for me, no one had high school parties. Or maybe I just wasn't invited to them. What if Joe and Abby are throwing a party tonight? <gasps> Good job, her one brain cell is working. Oh, he got that awkward riz. Mandy attempts to shut down Joe's party by poisoning the pizza, but Joe catches on to this, causing the whole thing to blow up in Mandy's face, literally. Where's your boyfriend on your birthday? 
Oh, she is getting destroyed tonight. Oh no, I already know what's about to happen and I don't, I don't want to watch it. Oh no. Oh no. After this victory over Mandy, Joe and her newfound posse form a group to combat the plastics. We called ourselves the anti-plastics. Seriously, the anti-plastics? You couldn't have come up with anything better than that. The metals, or the aluminums, or the rocks. This is so 2010s. Like, if you googled 2010s, this frame is what's gonna show up. Joe then creates a plan to take down the plastics one by one, and Abby begins to worry Joe is crossing a line. The sanitary, get out of there, people! I feel like that's kind of illegal, no? Taking pictures of minors like that? Uh... I just made the connection that her name is Chastity, but she's the biggest slut of them all. Joe campaigns for Homecoming Queen, but this results in her becoming hyper-focused on popularity instead of her academics. You'll stay with the DJ, right? Of course. What are your requests? Uh-oh, I guess Joe is becoming a mean girl herself. It's funny that the narrative is never that you can be popular but also be nice. Busy busy. She's like, can't you see, Dad? I'm bad now. I have colored strands in my hair. I wonder how much sugar is in this. You did not just ask Ben. He's offended that she's questioning the nutritional value of drinks now? Joe receives the money Abby's dad promised her in the beginning. However, she insists on giving the money back. Mandy overhears this exchange and exposes Joe. To win the race. You gotta be in the race. That's actually genuinely not bad advice. If you want to win the race, you gotta be in the race. I'm gonna start saying that. What if I wanted to forfeit the race? Now, now, that's not part of the saying. You can't add stuff. Is it true? Did my dad pay you to be friends with me? Yeah, Quinn finally got her big story. She quoted Mandy as a witness. Oh, what? Like you sold me out? Awkward. Wow, this is so emotional. I might cry. Unsatisfied with Joe's presence, Mandy plans on getting rid of Joe by getting her expelled. So remember the charity money I mentioned earlier that would become important later on? Well, here it comes. Nick and Mandy steal that money from the school and plant it in Joe's house. Oh, not the tramp stamp. But to cancel the homecoming dance. Oh, no, 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 no dance. Oh, boo. You stole the money. Oh, look, she took out the hair strands, though, so now she's she's a good girl again. On the brink of expulsion, Joe challenges Mandy to a duel. But because Joe has no friends anymore, going up against the plastics will be difficult. Oh, Wait! As much as we all might like that, I can't let it happen. <laughs> he is saying what everyone's thinking right now. Screw being ladies and screw being girls. So we're going to settle this like men. Yeah, like men. But through a series of realizations that occurred in the span of two minutes or so, Joe's friends all come back to her side. But I can't blame her. I'm not sure why you don't hate me. <laughs> He's like, I do. Wow, it took literally zero convincing for all of her friends to come back to her. Oh my god, are you crying? I've come around to Abby. I like Abby now. This guy, though, I still don't like him. They bring on Elliot to hack the neighborhood security cameras to prove that Mandy and Nick were the ones that stole the charity money. Oh, and Elliot is doing this in exchange for a date with Abby. I just have to detect their wireless signal, then hack in their computer and find their security. I love that hackers in movies are always just yapping about some nonsense. They're like, yeah, I just need to tap into the mainframe by infiltrating their Unix system and using the logarithmic search method, and then using C sharp and the Pythagorean theorem. And therefore the answer is mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and I'm in. 
We then get a montage of both groups recruiting more people to their side for the ultimate showdown. She wasn't going to pull any punches. Losers weaknesses, dyslexia, eczema, hay fever, pathetically blind, sprained ankle, and tragic hair. <laughs> Let's go team, kill, maim, dismember. See, he is saying exactly what I've been saying this whole time. Yeah, so remember when they said they were gonna fight like men? Well, they meant in a game of football. Run, moron, run! <laughs> oh yeah, there's my baby. Time for D&D. Ooh, dirty dancing? Yeah, chastity. And then in my loser head, I thought Dungeons and Dragons. Joe, I did it. We did it. We did it, Joe. <laughs> They had to do slow-mo and then they freeze-framed it just to emphasize that they won. Wow. Cinematography, 10 out of 10. Get off me! That, that's no- Again! Sir, Principal Duval. <laughs> I get the sentiment, but you can't be recording minors like that. Nick and Mandy get arrested and we finally move on to the homecoming dance, Jesus Christ, where somehow Joe managed to rig the results so that Elliot and Abby win king and queen. You won! That's so awesome! That's not just awesome, that's hyphen awesome. Well, congrats to them, I guess. I still don't like them together. Sorry. Sorry to this man. Nick and Mandy do community service. The plastics are led by Quinn. Oh, who's Quinn, you may ask? Some random side character that I didn't need to mention until now, so does it even f matter? Chastity finally looked up her name. <laughs> oh, Chastity. She's my favorite character. Everyone gets into college and the end. Jesus Christ. Oh, we're finally done. Oh my goodness. I feel like I just sat through like a three hour movie, but that was only about an hour and a half. I will give it this. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I thought the dialogue would be much more cringy. This is certainly nowhere not even within a mile of being as good as the original Mean Girls. But this was uh, definitely, it was pretty funny at certain parts. Anyway, uh, did you guys know that Mean Girls 2 was a movie? And if so, what was your favorite part of it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and suggest what movie I should watch next. Also, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on when I drop the Mean Girls review. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everyone.